you very much, Patrick. Pleasure to be here, folks. Uh, again, my name's Stuart Rudolph. I'm a serial entrepreneur and uh, inventor and uh, really a focus on software. I have about eight patents under my name and uh, several more uh, to do it. And I kind of want to bring to you my thinking, uh, what that is. And uh, we've kind of put this as being future-proof here and for a good reason because you've got to consider the systems that you're putting in today as ones that are going to take you there in the future. If you're just putting in technology today and it's only going to be used for the next six months or a year and it's not going to grow with you and it hasn't been battle tested, then you know it won't be in your best interest as you move forward. And unfortunately, you'll carry the same bad habits with you as your company grows. I'd like to take a little poll here and kind of ask a question, just raise your hands. How many people in the audience are corporations uh, wanting to utilize uh, uh, and we uh, are using UAS? Anybody here? Corporations? Excellent. Uh, how many people are service providers, those flying for those corporations who want to go and do that? Excellent. Uh, how many people here are manufacturing aircraft, actually making the planes? Good representation as we saw out here in the demo. How about the avionics uh, software manufacturers? Thank you. So, and uh, FAA regulators, any of them left in the room here? People from the FAA? Okay. Or how about uh, aviation consultants, those trying to help people understand the business of flying? Thank you. Uh, professional services, the lawyers, and Terry talked a little while ago about the insurance and, and those folks. Okay. And uh, academia, research labs, anybody here from NASA today? Perfect. Uh, how about, how many people here are actual licensed pilots? Ah, good. Very good. How many people here fly a drone? Actually fly them? All right, now I'm going to ask you an important question. How many of you guys have COAs who fly? Uh, this small sampling. And uh, thank you very much. And it helps me in my presentation understand uh, what, I've, uh, what I'm going to talk about and how really uh, to speak with you folks. Uh, and I just want to let everybody know, I think this is really important. It's in all of our best interest that we understand we are in the aviation business. So once that drone leaves your hands and it's not tethered to your body, you're not flying it inside, you're in the aviation business. And it's important that if you use them, you build them, or you're going to fly your drones out there and your unmanned aircraft, that you do it with the same rigor and the training and the scrutiny that needs to take place. Why it's important for us as an industry uh, it's important for us that any mistakes that get made, you know, people look at uh, uh, regulations and so forth. Um, and the other is because we are liable. And Terry, you know, of course, talked uh, about the insurance and that. But we're liable as corporations. We're liable as manufacturers. So you've uh, got to put these uh, pieces together. So uh, what I've done here is um, actually made a presentation that would help all of you think about how you should be thinking about it in the minimum software requirements. I'm not here to sell my software to you. You can more than happy to come on over and I'll do that in the booth. But I really want people to think about what are the minimum things that you need to have to uh, future-proof your software and making it device independent is one of them. But what you want to make sure is you don't make separate applications for each one of your devices. You don't want an application that you can install on your laptop. Then you're going to have one that's in your, uh, your tablet. Uh, you're going to have another one that's running in a different computer someplace. And that data is not being shared. You want to be able to make sure that you have one environment that fits many different applications. Device independent is the term that you've heard. You also want to make sure that it's web service enabled, that it connects to different systems out there. This is going to help you move into the future, and it's also going to help your solution be one with the other technologies that you might want to utilize, a different ground control station maybe, a different service provider that you're going to be working with, or maybe even invoicing your customer, or if you're an in-house corporation, following along with the protocols that are inside. The other is you don't want to continually to repeat information and type the same stupid things over and over again. When you go from flying your aircraft and copying that data over uh, to your checklist to 
copying it over to your COA reports, for example, you don't need to repeat that information. So you need to look at a system that will provide you the ability to bring data from one environment to another easily from the user perspective of doing things. That makes your uh, ability to have redundant information be accurate. Uh, and you want to try to make as many checklists as you can and pull down lists versus having somebody, you know, go in and type Boston because somebody might type it with a capital B or a small b or New York, they might put it NYC and might want to put it New York. You need to have it consistent for your database to do it. And you want to be able to start capturing your information organically. You need to track everything a user does. You've got to make sure that your system tracks everything that that person does. If they put a date in, if they made a change, and timestamp that. That's very important for you after the fact. Uh, you want to be able to come back and do your after action reports. You want to be able to come in if something bad happens. The FAA doesn't care. But when, uh, before that, as long as you have all your records, they care that you kept your records. They want to know when something bad happened for you to go in and be able to see how you did your work. And this is something you need to do. So you need a system that gives you accountability. Um, you want to make sure that the system is battle tested. If somebody's sitting there putting something together and using some new components there, that's excellent. But it's got to be redundant. It's got to have geo redundancy. It's got to be able to sit in different environments. It's got to be tested because it might work for one or three or five users. But your goal is to be a bigger company. Your goal, if you're in a corporation, that it could fit into the environments that you work in there. So you got to make sure it's that in a secure environment as well well. Okay. I'm having technical difficulties up here, folks. Yeah, that's the uh, software here. Here we go. Um, and in this case, uh, your user configurable uh, in your licensing models are uh, also very important, uh, the user configurable. You want your user to do the work. You really want to make sure that your software allows your users to pull out your business processes and put them in. Anytime you have to reach back to the people who wrote your software to add additions, or anytime you have to reach into your IT department, you are uh, uh, losing control. So these are important factors to have. Uh, your licensing model is going to decide where you're going to put your data because you own this information. If you decide you want to put it up in the cloud, that's excellent. That should be your choice. But if you want to put it behind your own firewall, and especially those people who raise their hands for corporations, this information needs to be stored in your environment. So your software has to be flexible enough to allow you to do these things. And that's very, very important. Put that with the device independent and you now you have a place where you know where your data is. Uh, we work with a lot of farmers out in, in North Dakota, and those folks don't want to share their data. They don't want their information on the same server with somebody else and have multi-tenancy. It's important for them to make that decision. Yes, there's a cost to it, uh, but it's really important. Now I've list, uh, a, a, I have a long list of things that your system must provide you with because it's important real easy. Hey, John, can you do these three things and get them done by tomorrow morning? But as your organization grows, as people spread out uh, through your environment globally as well, you need to be able to have a system that tasks those people, do those jobs, and you understand that what they've done, and they get the alerts and so forth to letting them know. And that I know when changes are had. So you need to have a reactive and a proactive system in that environment. Uh, messaging, so you're not being uh, overrun by your email system. Your email should not be running your business, or should your texting be running your business? You need to have a system that brings all the data in, so you have an understanding of what people were doing. So if somebody was out sick that day, they can sit into your environment and understand what needed to be done by those people, when it needed to be done, and it's very critical for you to run your business to your, and manage to your customer. Planning, especially in your emergency management here. You need to have your concepts of operations, your standard operational plans 
integrated with the process of flying. So if that plane goes down that hill and it catches on fire or hits uh, through, comes through a window of a store, what is your operational plan? Because you need to mitigate your risk. And by mitigating your risk, shortening the time it takes you to respond, that means you have less exposure, you have a higher probability of success to doing that. And planning is really important. And you need to have a system that creates as many reports as you want. Paying for reports is a sad thing these days. All that data is yours, and you need to be able to arrange that and make that happen. These are all parts, uh, in my mind, of what a system needs to have for future proofing. And it's got to have permissioning, so you can give your customer access to only the systems that they need to see or the data they need. And you, or if you're working inside of corporations, you might have a division in the East Coast and one on the West Coast, and you want to be able to separate that, but you're the boss and you want to see all that information come to you. So your system needs to have that out of the box, run by your users, and you, of course we have to deal a lot with the documents and the version controls and the ability to manage that data. And I think data management is a very large part of the things that we need to talk about. How do you catalog this information? I've been in environments with my customers where the phone rang and the, and the woman on the end said, you know, remember we took these photographs last April? And then I look at the person, they're going to one computer to see if it's in uh, that uh, computer and the drives there. Then they go to their main server and, gee, did I store that in my file directory properly? Instead of having that information incorporated with the flight and cataloged that you could have searched for the client, could have searched for some keywords and found that. So that's part of the the structure that your software needs to have in order for you to maximize that and manage that information and the ability to analyze that data. What are my cost? Uh, what is the cost to me to store this information? What information do I have there? And the ability, again, as I talked about, to search and retrieve. These are all very, very big components of your ability to do a job for your customer. And you've got to follow this compliant process. If you don't have a process in place of how you fly and what if scenarios and how do you keep your logs, unfortunately, again, we're in the business of flying. This is all about aviation. You have to treat yourself like you would a regular pilot and a regular commercial company. That's what you're in business to do. You're going to make money for it. Even those people who are out there taking images and doing reporting, they think that the camera on a drone is an extension of their tripod. Well, you know, when you hired that uh, helicopter pilot to take you out for that flight, what you did is hired the pilot, but you had no clue what that pilot had to do in order to fly and make maintain their license and maintain that aircraft and make sure that they were flying within the rules. And that's what you have to do now that you're taking upon this responsibility and flying that aircraft. And you need to, uh, if you've got your COAs for those who raised your hands here, you need to file your reports every time you fly and you need to file them on a monthly basis. You need to make sure that that's easy for you to do and your system allows you to do that. Maybe six months from now, there won't be any need for that or a year. But when when things do happen, you need to be able to have that flexibility. And again, as I talked about, you need to integrate your emergency plans in with what you do. They cannot be in a three ring binder or in a separate system because that doesn't help you find it. It doesn't allow you to react. It doesn't allow you to add the next person in your company to fly for you and have those most precious things, your business process and the way you do business in front of them to do their work. Because if you cannot train the next person to be as you want your company to be, you, you have some holes and you're at, at risk. And you've got to have that system with transparency and accountability. So what I've done here now, I've kind of showed you what I believe is important uh, for you to have as far as your, your software requirements that are in there, the way your software needs to respond. And uh, I want you to know it's very, very important that your process drives the requirements in the software. If you have to conform to the way the software works, then you're actually at a disadvantage and you're trying to fit apples into an orange cart and that's not going to work for you in the long run. It's not going to make you profitable. It's not going to make you accountable and it's not going to give you the transparency that you need. So I kind of want to talk to those folks who raised their hand who are manufacturers. In, you know, in addition to everything I've discussed, 
you've got to now also have the ability to deliver and, un and extend your um, chain management so you know what parts are in that aircraft and how they're flying that plane. You've got to be able to look at your checklist and your emergency procedures and make sure they're involved as they've described. And you've got to understand the habits of your, you know, the people that you're working with. What are they doing? How are they flying? So you can best respond. And your liability will go down because if you know that somebody is not flying your craft the way that they should be, you have something to go back and show and have that accountability in the system, and if they're not flying at all, maybe you have a chance to reach out and figure out why that is the case. Uh, for corporate users, you know, you have certain rules and regulations, Sarbanes-Oxley, how your company works, and your software needs to follow along with that. Your software also needs to integrate into your corporate way of doing business. So when you choose one of these softwares, your company might be, I'll call it an Oracle stack, and it has to sit there and be installed behind their firewall and follow those protocols. And it's gonna be much easier for you to have a system that is flexible to do that. And so you've gotta make those choices when you're purchasing these things because you might be able to use it, but you're not gonna get past your, uh, your corporate structure and they will not bend usually for what you need to do and you want to make sure that IT manages the system installs it and so forth but you actually run the system and that system gives you the ability uh, to control by your by yourself and if those service providers it's all about your customer you got to have that information in the fingertips. Your software has to give you the ability to respond to them quickly when they have a question, when they want to schedule a flight, when they want to know how much it's going to cost them. So these are the systems that uh, I look at in separating for those individuals that are out there. So uh, to recap, you need to kind of manage your future proof software. You need to have all of these environments in here for you to service your customer, or manage your fleet. This system needs to be able to change with you almost on a daily basis because this whole industry is evolving, whether you're a manufacturer or you're a corporation trying to fly or you're out there as a service provider and trying to provide that to those folks. And again, don't let the software manage you. You've got to manage that. And it's a very important thing when you're picking your software. Um, and I have loads of experience in both uh, building software and buying software and integrating into the operations. Uh, my little sales pitch, you'll see Virtual Air Boss. Uh, we're on this side uh, when you go in the door where lunch was served. We're more than happy to show you uh, how we've uh, integrated some of these requirements in our thinking and how it works. It's already being used by people who have COAs out there who are flying it and actually doing their monthly reports for the COAs in the system, making it easy, uh, giving them the ability to have the accountability, build the, uh, the business units that they work with and their customers and flying with the system, and they're putting all these daily logs together. I thank you very, very much. I was under my 20 minutes. <laughs>